The Fantasy Edge with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello everyone and welcome to the week 8 uh, wrap up and week 9 preview of the Fantasy Edge. My name is Jonathan Chen alongside uh, Richard Seville. Kevin Hall's out today, uh, so it'll be just the two of us. Richard, how's it going? Yeah, really good, John. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of my, I'm doing a bit of a nail biter in my uh, matchup this week um, against Kevin. Uh, Oh, he's, so he's, just a shame he's not on here to do the trash talking live. Well, I, you know, I don't trash trash talk too much because uh, I can come back on you. I'm very superstitious that way. No, so, all the trash talk. Oh, you got to yeah. take it as give as best as you can give. <sighs> well, yeah. Well, it doesn't For example, get, it doesn't get I'm still very... in first place. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, no, that's different. <laughs> that's different because you are in first place currently. Yep, about to move so, to seven and one, second well, highest score of the week. I- I'm pretty happy. Am I about fifth, sixth, something like that? I don't, uh, think I'm fifth, if I remember correctly. Anyways, yeah, I'm doing all right, Jono. Oh, all right, that's that's good. That's good. Well, let's get into it. The trade deadline is uh, well today. If you're listening to it on uh, Tuesday, Tuesday at four p.m. Three uh, three pretty big fantasy relevant trades have gone through. Uh, Richard, why don't you take your pick, and we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about the first. One, whichever you want, you uh, you want to go with first. Uh, okay, uh, I'll tell you what. I'll go with uh, Manuel Sanders to the 49ers. It seems okay. It seems to me that the 49ers want to. Uh, uh, they're obviously not satisfied with their receiving core as it stands, which is kind of interesting because they got you know some young talent in there, Debo Samuel, and obviously I don't know what it is about Dante Pettis. I don't think Shanahan has warmed up to him or or whatever, but they felt the need to bring in a, a veteran presence to the 49ers. Um, he scored a touchdown his first game against the well, I think almost everybody scored a touchdown against the uh, Panthers at that. Uh, <laughs> in the game, we'll talk. We'll talk about the game a little bit later. But but yeah, um, very interesting. Uh, I think Emmanuel Sanders, and it was quite interesting too. Um, I watched a, a clip from Emmanuel Sanders in his uh, podcast, or pardon me, um, at his press conference, and uh, he sounds like he's really he really likes Shanahan. He says this coach is really cool, man. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's like uh, it was it was a great press conference, and he says I couldn't wait to get home to tell my wife about how cool this coach is man he's just he's i mean who wouldn't be happy getting moved from the broncos to the undefeated niners that's about as be- about as good as you can hope for really yeah i guess that uh, a team that's on the rise rather than a team that's not so on the rise <laughs> and you have so. flacco all right i want to touch on this very briefly do you think at flacco's actually hurt or did the denver brass bench him for speaking up to the coaches you know i just caught the news about that uh um, later, and I I didn't put it in the uh, in in our uh, list of news because I just happened to catch that. Um, yeah, I think they're I think they kind of want to move on from Flacco. I don't think Flacco's the the guy anymore. Uh, I think they've had their fill. But uh, I don't know this 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 is the whole thing about the 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 offense of the of the Broncos is just not it's it's punch and grind. It's it's really not. Um, it's it's not anything exciting. I mean, you you've had quarterbacks like like Brock Osweiler who likes to throw, and and you've had Peyton Manning who likes to throw. You had John Elway. Like Joe Flacco just doesn't fit that Broncos type quarterback that they that they're used to having. I mean, even I mean, if you even look, you can even go through all their their quarterbacks. You know, and um, he doesn't really quite fit the um. It's 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 almost like I felt like saying the 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 Denver Ravens because it's exactly what it's like. It's like he's brought the Ravens with him to Denver. So uh, if 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 the uh, if the brass, if the front office has thought, or the coaching staff has thought that maybe uh, you know we can give him a feign injury, you know, a fall injury, and uh, bring in another guy and see, you know, try him out. I think they're ready, but man, a lot of a lot of starting quarterbacks going down this year. Yep. Oh, and uh, for any listeners that weren't uh, sure sure of the context we're talking about here, uh, after the loss yesterday, Flacco came out and ripped the coaches for playing scared and you know for you know, oh, being yes. afraid to lose and that kind of stuff. And then 
uh, this morning came out that Flacco may be placed on IR with uh, with an injury, so he won't be playing for a little bit. So that's what that's about. That's right. I, I for, yeah, I completely forgot about that press conference about him ripping the uh, ripping the staff. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you yep. mentioned that. I completely forgot about because I saw that right after the game. It's funny how it slipped my mind. But uh... yeah, that was extremely suspicious to me when I as soon as I saw Flacco, that was uh yeah, just the day after he ripped him, suddenly he's hurting on IR. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move on. Uh, let's do, I guess, before we get into the big Kenyan Drake argument, let's go with, uh, <laughs> Muhammad Sanu to the Patriots. Um, he got traded, uh, Sanu from the Falcons to the Patriots for a second round pick. A little high on the price, in my opinion, but that's not what we're here to argue. Uh, we're going to talk about his fantasy value. Uh, he was low end flex in Atlanta, even with the high powered offense there. Now moving to New England, obviously behind Julian Edelman and now a suddenly crowded receiver core with uh, Sanu, Philip Dorsett, Jacoby Myers, uh, and Kill Harry, who's uh, eligible to come back uh, next week. Are we, or should fantasy owners be picking up Sanu, Richard, as a uh, as a as a flyer, as somebody in a in a good offense? Uh, he's just, I don't know. I think he's just a sleeper in a deep league. Really, uh, I don't see him anything better than that. Uh, I don't think you you run out and get Sanu. Um, I think what it really does is it it helps us. Uh, open our eyes to Russell Gage on the Falcons, really. I think we now have somebody else to look at on the Falcons. So that's the only that's the only thing I, I can see with this trade is uh on the Fal I mean, okay, Justin Hardy maybe, but on but I think this is more uh, more interesting of what's gonna happen on the Falcon side. But for for Sanu, nah, like you say, you've got to sort uh Dorset and Edelman there. It's they're pretty much set in stone as the playmakers and Sanu's just I don't know what's going on with Josh Gordon at the moment, but I think that's kind of. I don't think he's not playing for the Patriots. He's IR or he's getting waived. There's no. uh, He's he's done with the in a Patriots uniform, which hurts me to say, but that's uh, that's what that is now. Yeah. So, what do you think of Mohamed Sanu? Are you are you high Uh, on him? Is he is is should he be owned or do you feel like owning him or? I'm not super high on him for fantasy purposes. Uh, because he's a Patriot, he'll probably have a game or two where. You know, he'll catch a couple short yards, touchdowns, things like that. Um, but it, it'll be inconsistent. Um, I don't like you saw, he saw in his first game, obviously, he's still getting acclimated to the, you know, the option route offense with Brady and all that, but two, tar- uh, five targets, two catches, 23 yards. Nothing to get super excited about. But like I said, he, he probably will have a big game or two. Uh, but it'll be inconsistent because Edelman is the option one A and one B in that offense. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, I think, really like Dorsett. You know, I think. yeah, Dorsett is looking very good, and uh, at least his potential is coming out after the Colts made him look like he was a complete bust. Yeah, Edelman looked a little bit better uh, in the last game, but Edelman's—I don't know. Every week, this—I wonder how much this chest is bothering him. I don't know. He seems to be playing through it okay. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't even know why he keeps every week. He's on the questionable list, but yeah, as a Patriots thing. Belichick just makes everybody questionable. Oh, I wanted to tell you, you know, I came up, speaking of Belichick, I came across a something that he used to trick against the Jets. Uh, I forget what it was. It was something like, he took a time out, like, uh, with about five minutes. I think it was about five minutes left in the game. The Patriots were already up 33 nothing, and uh, what they did was that they had the punt team out there, and um, it, of course, it was it was in it was in that area where uh, punting. You know, if you punt, you got to be pretty accurate. You don't want the punt to go into the end zone. So what the Patriots did is that they took a delay of game, but the Jets refused it. <laughs> that was a great it. TV moment, just because we got Belichick smiling on camera. Yeah. That was a. Excellent and moment so there. Used a little the, gamesmanship, so but it's it's a lo- it's a loophole in the rules because then the the Jets they refuse the penalty, so the clock keeps ticking. So the so the Patriots are able to run off more clock. Of course, it didn't it probably made the Jets happy in the end anyway because you know they're getting blown out thirty three zip. But so then the next one they can't take two uh, um, two in a row. So what they did was that the Patriots. Uh, purposely did a false start before the punt, so they get so they knock off another forty seconds off. <laughs> <laughs> and Patriot and 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 uh, so so Bill Belichick, you know, he's figured out a a way to use up clock. So perfect, was, perfect gamesmanship right there. It doesn't hurt anybody. You're not like embarrassing them by like no, you know, no, no. It embarrasses the point. league. <laughs> the league. The, the rules committee will have. Uh, they're they're gonna fix that one. I yep, Brady suspended so. four games. That's how that'll go. <laughs> so, anyways, all right. 
Let's well, move yeah. on to the final trade here. Uh, this happened this morning. Dolphins, Cardinals, uh, Kenyon Drake to Arizona for conditional 2020 pick. Um, we talked about this a little bit this morning, but Kenyon Drake, it looks like he's going to get the majority of the workload now on Thursday night against the Niners, which in my opinion, he's unplayable against that defense uh, on his first game on a short practice week with a new team. But moving forward... Uh, Chase Edmonds looks like he's going to miss a few weeks with a hamstring injury. David Johnson is still iffy for the weeks after. Can you realistically play Kenyon Drake as a consistent option, seeing as I think you know got, how, how how the Dolphins have just refused to use him over the last few years? Uh, on the Cardinals, uh, well, this is the weird thing about the Cardinals. They brought in Zach Zenner and Alfred Morris, and this was even before Chase Edmonds got hurt. So I'm kind of wondering about what's really happening with David Johnson I think we're going to, even though the Cardinals don't seem to want to play a committee as such, you know, they, they like to have a main running back. I, this is really a wait and see. You got to, you, I think owners of Kenyon Drake are better off with him in, uh, on the Cardinals, of course, because um, Kenyon Drake on Miami, you know, game script, right, is obviously always going to be negative almost most of the time, right? So with the Cardinals, there's a little bit more positive game script. And okay, he's gonna probably gonna be out there on Thursday, and like you say, it's not a great matchup. But um, be good to see how he can run with a you know uh, this is probably the best football team that he's that he's had since he started, right? Because he's been with Miami since day one. So uh, it's it's a wait and see thing, but um, I like his chances because he he's a pass catching back as well. So um, <clears throat> we'll see we'll see how he is going forward, but. I don't know. I'm wondering if uh, a committee is coming up or because I can see Zach Zenner being in there. I know Alfred Morris was inactive in the last game, so oh, I don't know. Zach Zenner. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, they had to rely on Zach Zenner. He was the only one dressed after Chase Edmonds got hurt. I think that's part of it as well because it doesn't seem like they gave up a very high pick for Drake. So I think this is just Miami getting all the assets they could uh, for somebody that they just don't feel like using anymore. Right. But yeah, like you said, if Johnson and Edmonds can't dress, sure, Drake is worth a, definitely worth a look against the Bucks, but not Thursday. I refuse to play anybody against the Niners defense now. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous how bad they make other QBs and other running backs look. It's it's actually cool, really cool to watch Nick Bosa. He's really, really good. Yeah, he is really good. And he's uh, uh, probably, I think he's even probably better than Joey. <laughs> Uh, he, he can stay on the field. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. He's consistently healthy. Is. Well, there's Our one more. Uh, there, there's just one more thing I should mention. Is uh, yep. um, sorry, Richard. Uh, just just uh, one more thing about that. Uh, the Dolphins Cardinals trade is uh, the Mark Walton. It looked like Kalen Balage was getting a lot of uh, touches in that game. So I, I'm not sure if Mark Walton is going. You know, I, I don't th really think he's a a must own. He's an RB three four best really. Uh, he's he's a flex. I mean, he got today. He has ten carries and three targets, which realistically it's. That's not bad usage for, for Miami back. Mm. Balash has three carries and a target. So Walton's the guy, and Pittsburgh's defense has looked pretty decent. So not not terrible. I mean, outside those first two drives <laughs> where Fitzpatrick looked like Fitzmagic again. but <laughs> Yeah, he was, he, was, uh, he was throwing punts. Uh, well, so he's throwing it deep. Because on, on on third and long, well, I might as well throw it deep. If it's if it's intercepted, it's like a punt. <laughs> that was basically the idea. To... Uh, but yeah, Walden looks like the guy. Not super, super must own. But if you need a running back, he's a starter, <laughs> at least. There's that. So yeah. All right, let's move on to our, uh, our game reviews here. Start with a Thursday nighter. Um, Washington in Minnesota, 19-9 to for the Vikings. Uh, Dalvin Cook and Alex Madison looking like the... Well, arguably the best one-two punch at running back in the league. Um, I guess the big takeaway from Washington is um, Dwayne Haskins looks terrible. Oh. And he ruined Terry McLaurin's day. He did. Uh, boy, McLaurin is having a great first half. Uh, running good routes. Keenum was finding him. And then Haskins comes in and ruins everything. He looks in inaccurate. He couldn't get rid of the ball. Um, and, the, the, and Walton just fumbled. And the one time he... Uh, the one time he did target McLaurin, he overshot him by about six feet and threw an interception. It was a brutal showing, and yeah, awful. Yeah, uh, I think one of the things about uh, is is you know Keenum getting hurt, and uh, you know, it really, what uh, I, I don't know what other choices they can go to Colt McCoy, but there's really not much difference. The, the yeah, I don't think Haskins is going to be ready. I don't see him as a, uh, you know, you don't see rookies this this bad out the gate. I mean, I was even sort of 
I was kind of looking up, I was looking up how Haskins was so bad, I had to do, I was actually doing comparisons to see uh, who was worse, Peterman or Haskins. I was actually, I actually looked that up because I wanted to, and it turns out that uh, <laughs> Peterman's actually a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, not overall, there's the, there's, there needs to be a little bit more, uh, there needs to be a little bit more stats in order to make a, a full judgment, but uh, Haskins is not off to a good start in the NFL. That's uh, sad to say. Definitely not. Um, I guess on the Viking side, other than the running backs, Cousins only threw inc- three incomplete passes in 26 attempts, and without Thielen, Stefan Diggs is a bona fide wide receiver one. Yeah, I. it's a funny turnaround, um, <clears throat> because I think people are kind of hoping for this for, uh, I don't, I see we got the turnaround for Stefan Diggs. I, I don't see a turnaround coming for guys like Corey Davis or Odell Beckham Jr. It just doesn't seem to be there for, for other players to uh to make a turnaround. Uh, it's really it's really looking bad. I mean I thought after Corey Davis after uh the week before I thought, oh and then I don't know. Tannehill I mean, wasn't ten- fine in him. Yeah, it was it was a weird game for Tannehill. I mean, he didn't. I think he had under a hundred yards passing in the first half, but two touchdowns. And then, uh, well, he had two touchdowns on the first couple of drives. I think because I had him in one of my leagues, I started him after Mahomes got hurt. I think he had like thirty yards and two touchdowns after the first quarter. And I was like, ah, crap, this is a bad play. But picked it up in the second half. But you're right, uh, Corey Davis, awful game. Uh, AJ Brown had his day saved by a touchdown, an eight yarder. Before that, he had one catch for three yards. Um, uh, not a great day for the Titans pass catchers, but Tannehill is still better than uh, than Mariota was. Mm. All right, moving on here. Let's go to uh, Seattle and Atlanta. Uh, new. Let's usher in the Matt Schaub era. 460 yards passing. Just, just awesome. Love to see Matt Schaub doing that. Didn't <laughs> see that coming. I didn't I'm, see it coming. I actually said to, I was actually telling people that Seattle is a great sleeper defense because Matt Schaub was starting. I, uh, I feel yeah. a little embarrassed about that now. Well, I mean, they got the, they got the one pick. Devonta Freeman fumbled. So it wasn't awful. They got a couple, a couple takeaways, but. I know, yeah. but, uh, but talk about unleash the beast or what? I mean, <laughs> who needs Matt Ryan? Yep, yeah, it just—I don't know. All these a lot of mats on the team. That <laughs> keep getting Matt Bryant, the kicker, Matt Schaub. They like their mats. But anyway, uh, um, but not a, not a great game for Russell Wilson. Um, he you know, he got a couple of touchdowns, but he didn't throw a lot. Um, he didn't need to. No, the Falcons are bad. Yeah, it was it was all uh, Chris Carson. And uh, Tyler Lockett's definitely for real. Yes, definitely. He always has been. It's just a matter of can he make the one big play, right? Yeah, but the thing is, is that he's just not, uh, he, he isn't, um, uh, he, Kevin complains that, you know, if you take away the one big play, he always has that one big play. But I don't know, every player has one big play in a game, and but it just seems like he doesn't get enough targets in order to, uh, but uh, I don't know, he's getting them. Uh, also, um even though even though uh, Metcalf didn't get a lot of uh, yardage, I mean he's still he's still one of uh, Russell Wilson's favorite end zone shots. So eh, he's oh, yeah. worth yeah. definitely worth a big owning. body red zone threat for sure. Yeah. Uh, all right, moving on from there. Uh, let's go to the probably one of the most boring games of the week: <laughs> Denver Indianapolis. Talked a little bit about Flacco earlier. Um, yeah. So it wasn't a whole, wasn't a whole lot of offense here. Marlon Mack really had the only game worth talking about: seventy six yards and a touchdown. Uh, I mean, Jacoby Brissett struggled for the first time this this year. Uh, no touchdown, so he couldn't put himself into the touchdown lead. But mm. eh, not not really much to talk about here. No, I, I it just goes to show you. Right after I've been talking up to Jacoby Brissett, he has a bit of a down game, but. No interceptions, but I mean, it was, ah, uh, Denver defense it was, I don't know, the Indianapolis were very slow out the gate. They won the game. I'm sure that's all uh, Brissett cares about. Mm. All right. Uh, Philadelphia Buffalo. Um, I think this is the Buffalo defense's worst performance of the year, probably 31 points, uh, to the Eagles who had previously been struggling. Carson Wentz actually didn't have a great game, only had 172 yards, uh, one touchdown, but you know, Jordan Howard had a great game, 96 yards and a touchdown. Sat him in our league. I sat him. <laughs> that's that's fair. The Buffalo defense, you know, they're very very good. Yeah, but that's that's a fair a fair move. But um, I should have known because it was a it was a very windy and rainy game. So a lot of the games this weekend were. Yeah, the, especially the Patriots game was quite rainy. Yeah. But, um. 
But I guess the main takeaway here for me is if Josh Allen was unable to, he only threw for 169 yards on 34 attempts. If he's unable to take advantage of a secondary as poor as the Eagles, is he really fantasy trustworthy in in other matchups that aren't supposedly cakewalks? Um, you know that's a good question because it it just hasn't been. Uh, it, it, it just it just doesn't seem to matter what the matchup is, does it? I think with with Allen, um, the only full game of Josh Allen for the record that I've seen is the one against the Patriots and he looked brutal uh he threw three picks before getting knocked out of the game uh with the injury and I don't know it's just he's struggling with pressure this year I think teams have kind of caught up to that and the key to stopping him is to make sure he can't use his legs yeah force him keep, keep, keep him in the pocket put pressure on him and he tends to just throw wildly which is I guess what the the, the knock on him coming out of the college was but as long as you can keep it contained, which uh, the book is out now, it seems it's trouble for, for him to have to adjust so far. But in this game, he was the uh, top rusher. Eight carries for 45 for the Bills. Yep. He was the top rusher. That's what you're hoping for with, with him, right? If yep. he's only throwing for 169 yards against the Eagles defense, then he needs those rushing yards. Yeah, I think he's he's at the front of the, uh, the trailing pack behind uh, Lamar Jackson, who's way ahead of all the other quarterbacks in rushing. I think his back-to-back 100 yard games would put him in first anyways wouldn't they yeah yeah all right enough of the enough of the bills <laughs> um uh onto the chargers and bears uh well matt Nagy finally finally started running the ball and look at that david montgomery had an amazing game 135 yards on touchdown granted it is against the mess that is the the los angeles chargers but do you think they're going to continue this or is trubisky gonna have to throw 50 passes next time they get in trouble i think i think they uh um, Matt Nagy said that they wanted to run the ball more, and I think this is the the breakout game finally that people have been waiting for for David Montgomery. Um, I had him as a buy low candidate. Uh, Fantasy Pros asked me to do write a column for them, and I had him as a buy low candidate um, around the time of the London game, and I th- I thought people should be picking him up. Now he didn't have a good game last week, but um, I do think. That uh, Montgomery is the guy to own, and but he's not buy low anymore because um, he's had the breakout game. Um, so yeah, I think I think this is the the league winner that people have been waiting for, and I think they're going to still continue to use David Montgomery. It's definitely a good guy. If you manage to if you manage to um, <coughs> take my column to heart at the at Fantasy <laughs> Pros, then uh, you you got it right. Finally came through, but it um, but everyone was kind of talking him up as a league winner. So uh, yeah, I think they continue to feed him the ball now that they can see him what he can do. Um, Twenty seven carries though. I, I'm not sure if uh they want to give him that many but he's gonna have that was a lot yeah he's gonna have to get but he is gonna for him to be effective he's gonna have to get uh around 20 plus carries per game uh sucks for me i traded i traded him away and i think in week week three week four for carry and johnson at the time it was a pretty fair trade now it's not (laughs) i'm stuck with i'm stuck with ty johnson all right actually it's a good that's a good segue to that game let's go to uh (laughs) the lions giants so I guess after a week of uh, hype on Ty Johnson as being, you know, the new Lions running back, people blowing their their auction point, their auction money on him. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting, you know, the world from a backup running back, but I was expecting 15 carries, 12 to 15 carries. I think he had 10. Uh, he did not lead in carries. Trey yeah. Carson, <laughs> Trey undrafted, Car- undrafted was, free agent, <laughs> yeah, I know. had more carries. I know. Uh, the Packers uh, put him out on waivers after uh, when Jamal Williams he he was in there for Jamal Williams so he's played for two teams like already this year um, yeah and and so um, <laughs> twelve carries you know and actually I thought I thought it that uh, I thought it was going to be clever and have J D McKissick because I thought aha J D McKissick is the guy to own no it's a, it's a big old crappy and Paul Perkins is gonna, probably going to come in there at some point too so I I think it's a four back committee. I know that's what it is, and uh, I wouldn't drop him. Uh, I think I mentioned this in a group during the week, but uh, he had about twenty twenty yards uh, called back on holds, and then Stafford missed him on a wide open touchdown. Yeah. So if that happens, people are saying, "Oh yeah, look at that! I spent my you know great great pickup by me." But eh, give yeah. him inches, right? Yeah. But he, I, he led the he he did lead the the Detroit backs in snaps. So I think if you bought him, obviously you're not going to drop him if you spent money on him. So. Hold him for another week and see what happens. But 
Disappointing for sure. I know Barkley got the the lion's share of the uh, receptions in that game, but I think uh, Darius Slayton should be owned because yes, uh, um, Darius Slayton's a good player. He should be owned because the um, Daniel Jones is trying to find him a lot. And, and Daniel yeah. Jones had the best game of his uh, of his career since week one. Yeah, still lost though. Uh, I mean, three hundred twenty yards and four touchdowns. Well, it's good. It's good. I <laughs> can't blame the guy. That's not not Jones's fault. No. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, let's back to uh, let's talk about the destruction uh, that the Niners put on Carolina. I know we talked about it a little bit at the top, but over here. Oh, okay. I, I jumped down to the Lions and and Giants because it's a good segue. Okay. Um, Niners stay undefeated. Tevin Coleman uh, won People Fantasy Weeks 105 yards uh, and three touchdowns rushing and another receiving touchdown. D- is Matt Breida startable anymore with the way Coleman's just seized the starting job? Well, uh, Breida got hurt, so I, I think you st- I think Tevin Coleman is the own, yes. I Yeah, I think um, he is the own. Jeff Wilson got hurt, too. Yeah, and Mostert came in and scored a, a forty-yard touchdown. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know, but I think Coleman is the Coleman is the uh, the number one. I think he was always the sort of like one A there. Yeah. So I think the you know there's no. I'm just looking at these uh, at these uh, the stats for the quarterbacks. Quarterbacks weren't really that great. Garoppolo, you really can't own him. But kind of, but Christian McCaffrey, obviously. Um, Seems to be matchup proof. No matter who he plays, he he's still doing it. Except was, the Bucks. The Buccaneers is the only game that his yards per carry were yeah were really ugly. And I was kind of expecting that for this McCaffrey. I was kind of expecting, oh, this is going to be kind of like the Bucks. They've seen the the Forty ers have seen the film. You know, usual thing. You know, sometimes a team can see the film, but they can't do anything about it. But obviously, the Forty ers um, that was something that uh, the only thing that the Panthers could exploit. And, but I don't know the rest of it. Uh, Kyle Allen apparently, uh, I think they'll probably try to get uh, Cam back in for next week. Yeah, that's that was going to be my next question. Um, if Cam plays next week, is he a must add? Obviously, it's yes. former former MVP Cam Newton, but yeah, I'm not sure who they play. But uh... if Cam comes back, I think after the game that Kyle Allen had uh, three three picks, no touchdowns. I think this was the kind of game that maybe the Panthers brass was hoping for, so they can get the uh, a nice transition back into Cam without too much controversy. Mm-hmm. But we'll see how that works out. Uh, okay, next game here. Let's move on to uh jets and jaguars um speaking right. of quarterback controversies what do the jaguars do when nick Foles comes back gardner Minshew had another great game 279 yards three touchdowns the first three touchdown game of his career does nick Foles come back and be the starter right away with all the money they're paying him that's a good question you know i've been wondering about that myself i'll be definitely watching the news to see uh how this shakes out i actually think what they'll do is that they'll keep Minshew in there Kind of like how they've kept Cali Allen in. Now, they didn't do that with Drew Brees. As soon as Drew Brees was ready, they put him right in, right uh, there. I mean, it's it's a Drew Brees, right? It's not Nick Foles. It's no, Drew Brees. it's Drew Brees. So... Uh, Although they do that. have the same number of Super Bowl wins, I get that. But but you were talking about the, <laughs> you're talking about the money here, right? And Drew yeah. Brees is the Drew Brees is the money guy there, right? So uh, in this case, I think they just I think they I think they uh, just they let uh, they let Foles. Uh, they let Foles relax. Uh, the Jacksonville, they're four and four. I think they're gonna. It's not a throwaway season for the Jacksonville Jaguars by any by any stretch. But um, if if the Jacksonville feel they want to, I don't know if it's. I don't know. It could be a quarterback controversy. I don't know. What do you think? I'm I'm not sure. Uh, I don't I don't know. I think a lot of the fan base has rallied behind Minshew just because he seems to be a very likable guy. Um, he's played very well without Foles. I think you you'd need a reason to take to take Foles out of there. You the Jaguars would need either a really bad game from Minshew or a couple of bad games from him, or you know Foles has to come in and perform well for the Jags to come out and say, you know what, yeah, we're gonna bench this guy that the whole fan base has rallied behind and just take them out like that. I think it would be a bad look. Yeah, um, I, I, but I don't think I don't think Foles is gonna be much better than Minshew. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't. Uh, I think he might be. You know, I think there might be a slight. Um, Foles is far better at the deep pass, I think. Uh, Minchu can, Minchu can do the same. It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. They're so even, uh, 
as as far as my just kind of evaluating it in my head, it's it's really hard to say. But because I was wondering about this last week, because because I wasn't sure whether I could consider uh, like because I had Minshew as our moving on up last week, and I wasn't sure. Like I said, mm, he is moving on up, but Foles is coming back. Other part of this game though, um, Le'Veon Bell, ah, a nice another. Uh, 23 yards for your fantasy team. So, uh, I lay you on Bell. The bust I predicted. I mean, I don't think you can trust really anybody in that Jets offense. I thought maybe that uh, you could kind of work it out with Darnold because uh, he's got a pretty easy schedule coming up. All the Jets do. Uh, very, very easy. They have Miami twice. They got the Bengals. So, it's easy schedule coming up. But hasn't really been anything to hang your hat on here. <laughs> Darnold threw three picks against the Jags. The Jalen Ramsey, Jalen Ramsey list Jags. So, I don't really know what to think. Yeah. It's tough. No, I, no, I don't know all this. Next game, uh, Cleveland and New England. This was shaping up to be a pretty big blowout early on. The Pats went up 17 nothing very, very quickly. Um, Cleveland made it a game to be give all credit to them. They came back, uh, did not let things get out of hand. Um, the, honestly, the base takeaway from this game was that awful play when Baker Mayfield pitched it to Lawrence Guy. Oh, that up, was straight Threw up. it at Lawrence Guy for the interception. Um, just incredible. Design play, too. Design play, and uh, yeah, went right into his arms. <laughs> Not really sure what was supposed to happen on that play. I think it was just it was just one of those shovel passes that went. It was supposed to be a shovel pass, and he shoveled it to the. <laughs> he shoveled it. It's it's actually uh, Baker's butt fumble. <laughs> that is a uh, yeah. I think that's what they were saying. Is that was, that was Baker Mayfield's uh, butt fumble? Yeah, brutal mo- play. Butt fumble um, moment. Um. Yeah. Otherwise, Nick Chubb had a great game, other than the, the two consecutive fumbles, which is weird to say. But he ran for 131 yards on the Patriots defense. Uh. I think the rain contributed a little bit. The slickness of the ball got poked out on two consecutive runs, both of which were decent sized runs, actually. Yeah. Uh. One of them was pretty close to the goal line. I think five five yards out, something like that. Ten yards out, but. Uh, good game for him. Uh, Edelman, two touchdowns, like we said at the top. He's obviously the number one. And I think something I I, did, I didn't mention earlier uh, was that the biggest beneficiary of the Sanu trade is Brady. Now he's got another weapon to throw to, and his his game here, he didn't have a great game by any means. 250 yards, uh, 259 yards, two touchdowns. But I think that performance, kind of 19 points, is going to be his floor moving forward with all the weapons he's got. Mm, yeah, I do. I, I agree. Um, there's one thing I would like to mention, though, too, is is that the Cleveland defense, they got to Brady quite a lot. You know, they really did. They, uh, they, uh, they sacked how many, t- I don't know how, I don't, the stats aren't on, on this list here, but, uh, Cleveland were able to pressure him. Like you say, and that's how they were managing to stay in the game. Yep. Uh, a lot of that is the, yeah, all credit to Cleveland. They actually schemed it very well, but the Patriots offensive line is brutal right now. Um, Marshall Newhouse is the left tackle. He allowed two sacks and like three, three or four pressures. It was brutal. He's not a good lineman. Uh, Isaiah Wynn comes back in two or three weeks, so that should improve things on uh, on Brady's end. If you're looking for a playoff QB, hmm. Bengals Rams. Um, Joe Mixon actually looked like a running back this game, shocking everybody. Uh, I don't. I'm still mad at that guy. Cooper Cup, incredible, 220 yards on seven catches. Uh, just just incredible. And now Brandon Cooks has a second concussion of the season, fourth of his career. If Sterling Shepard's any indication, uh, Cooks might be out for two or three weeks while he gets his head right. And is Josh Reynolds a uh, a pickup after the Rams have their bye this week? Uh, no, I don't think that. I don't trust. I don't trust anybody outside of Cooper Cup. Uh, I just don't think there's. You can. He's. I. I don't really. I really think there's better sleepers that you can that you can pick up. Um. Without. I don't. I really don't think. I think it's actually the guy who's get, who benefits is Woods. But and uh and the and from what we've seen of Cooks this year, what is Reynolds? Reynolds is. Reynolds is. Uh, I mean, he um, did have seventy. He's kind of like the, a touchdown. He's kind of like the rental car that you're gonna have while while the other one's getting fixed. So, man, that sounds really, really mean to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who to Josh Reynolds? Well, it is true. I mean, it's the it's, you know it's the rental car that it's it's the it's the loaner car while your car's in the shop. So you know, That's true. But it does it, it can get you through a game or two, maybe. Depending mm. if Cooks wants to not get concussed again, because two and three, what three weeks now since his last one, not not great, no. not healthy. You know something? I I have a funny take on London games. I always find that London games just don't 
are notoriously for for not following the script, but they they did follow the script with it when it came to Cooper Cup, but everything else was just you know not great. And I noticed that uh, Todd Gurley isn't on our list, isn't on the list here for for uh, for rushing yardage. I'm sure I don't know what his stats were. He had about 40 yards. He had the touchdown. He was out touched by Daryl Henderson, but Gurley scored the the touchdown, so right. he maintained his value there. Oh, okay. All right. But he's in like full time share stuff now. Like <laughs> he's not not Todd Gurley that 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 we know. No. Uh, all right. Next game, uh Raiders and Texans. This was a really exciting game. Uh Deshaun Watson did some cool things, three touchdowns. Uh Darren Fells, I have some stats on this. Darren Fells is now tight end 5 on the season. Yeah. He has he's got no, sorry, tight end 6. He's got five touchdowns, which is tied for the league lead with Austin Hooper. Yeah. <laughs> he's got to be owned. That's all there's to it. I mean, he's going to yep. he's getting the uh he's getting the targets. Um, he, for how, uh, you know, valuable tight ends are for, especially, that's all you really want. If you're, if your tight end can score a touchdown every, every game now and again, uh, then fine. But, uh, you know, Fells is obviously a main target. I, I was a little bit disappointed about, uh, DeAndre Hopkins in this game. I thought, I actually thought DeAndre Hopkins would have a blow up game, you know, touchdown after touchdown, Will Fuller being out. I didn't think, think that Stills would be, and Stills wasn't. Uh, I think you still got to own Stills. Stills didn't have a, um, you know, a heavily targeted game, but I thought this was going to be a, a really huge game for, uh, um, Deshaun Watson and, uh, I mean, Deshaun Watson got three touchdowns, yes, but I thought, I thought he'd find his bud, uh, Nuke, and he didn't, uh, still got 109 yards, you know, but he's really starving for some touchdowns this year. Really needs him. Yeah. Um, like you said, 109 yards, nothing to scoff at, but I think a lot of people were expecting like a, a Cooper Cup kind of game, 220 yards and a touchdown, especially exactly. against the Raiders. Yep. And their, uh, last, or their, yeah, last ranked, uh, defense, according to pro football focus grades. Uh, thanks to them for that. Um, yeah. Otherwise, Tyrell Williams is still the greatest red zone target in the history of football. Uh, touchdown every game in his Raiders career. Yep. All right, moving on to the uh, Sun. Let's go to the Sunday night game because that was a fun game too. Uh, Must have been fun for you seeing Aaron Rodgers make miraculous pass after miraculous pass. Uh, Just falling down, looks like he's throwing it away. Especially the one to the back of the end zone to Jamal Williams. Yes, well, and and Aaron Jones uh, like lighting it up. Aaron Jones turned out to be the the number one running back in fantasy half PPR. Um, yeah, more surprising. Matt Moore. <laughs> go, dude. Go, go, go. He's kept the team is in Patrick the game. Is Patrick Mahomes a system QB? Where's Kevin? This is the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> is Patrick Mahomes a system? You know, uh, yeah, well, I don't think you can make that argument too quickly, but, uh, but I was very pleased with Matt Moore. Matt Moore, uh, Matt Moore is a very, you know, he's, I don't know, been in the league for, well, hasn't been in the league, but I mean, he's been around the game. He got called up by Andy Reid to be in this game. And, uh, he's, he's kind of like a camp arm quarterback nowadays. Like if you, if he does get hired, he's kind of like the camp arm. So he's like, he's, a, he's a kind of a coaching type of quarterback. So it's kind of weird seeing him in there and yet doing so well. So his students can take note if, cause I think he was coaching at a, at a high school or something, you know? So yeah, no kidding. I mean, he, he played well. Um, yeah. can't really say anything else. He played well. Uh, I don't know. 276 yards. Yeah. I don't know how, who, if, if Travis Kelsey finally caught another touchdown, would have had yeah. two if he didn't drop the second yeah. one. And, uh, um, nice to see, uh, Sammy Watkins getting a little more involved. Didn't get a lot of yards, but, um, um, he was heavily involved. Yeah, McCoy. Yeah, not so great. Don't know what's going to happen with that, uh, backfield now. Mm. It's going to be like this the entire time. Nobody's going to have really, real blow up games. I think Damian Williams, uh, if you own him, he, I own him in a couple leagues. I haven't dropped him yet because of games like this. He gets some rushes and he's still at a, a pretty good uh, aerial threat for, as a running back. So if you need a blow-up game and you're desperate, Damien Willems isn't the worst, especially if Moore's going to be checking it down, which is okay, the right play with these running backs. Yep. Although there was a play that Darwin Thompson got absolutely blown up on a screen pass and it did not look good. Oh, right. Yeah, he's been playing us. <laughs> I noticed, I've noticed that uh, he gets... He's been doing special teams mostly. Yep. All right. On to Arizona, New Orleans. The return of Drew Brees uh, came back and was typical Drew Brees. 370 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, Taysom Hill had a touchdown. Still doesn't qualify 
a- any position that's not QB. So yeah. fantasy sites get on get get on your stuff. Come on, he's not just a QB. Surprised me. Uh, I was a little unsure about whether uh, Drew Brees would be just doing short passes and not, you know, really maybe didn't have the grip for anything. You see, you just don't know with this because you saw the hand, a little hand brace that he had on there. It was you kind of wonder how much that was going to affect him? Didn't affect him at all. He's ready to go. Um, and uh, kudos to Teddy Bridgewater. Actually, I have to, you know, I think everybody has to give him a little bit of a standing ovation for what he did in place of Drew Brees. He was undefeated throughout that whole time, kept the, uh, kept the, the Saints in the playoff hunt. And in fact, they're still in the hunt for the top seed and, uh, just amazing job by Teddy Bridgewater. Kudos to him. But, uh, Drew yep. Brees, great job, uh, coming back. Yep. I think the Saints have the best, well, best backup tandem in the league. Uh, Latavius Murray once again absolutely destroying it, uh, filling in for Alvin Kamara. Just man, saving my season in the in the F six P league. Whew. Yeah, and Chase Edmonds uh, left the game. Yep. Uh, and uh, we, as we talked about, that. Kenyon Drake is the new starting running back yes. for Thursday, anyways. We'll just have to see how that works out. Yeah, uh, ev- you- everything's back to normal, and Alvin Kamara will come back. We hope soon. Yep. Oh, and on the Arizona side, outside of the running backs, Christian Kirk came back and was once again Kyler Murray's favorite target. Uh, eight catches in his return game, seventy nine yards, highest targeted receiver. If you're in any kind of PPR league, Christian Kirk is a must must own he's gonna be heavily targeted in the air raid offense uh, yeah you know what i have uh actually i have larry fitzgerald as a uh as my buy low candidate this week uh fantasy pros they keep asking me this question but i chose uh larry fitzgerald because i'll tell you why uh i do think that larry fitzgerald he'll be able because they've got two dates with the san francisco 49ers coming up one of them of which is of course this Thursday and they'll have uh, they'll have another game and then uh, the game after that they'll have the 49ers again so I I actually think those type of games I think those are um, games where Kyler Murray will depend on old faithful to get him through yeah hopefully games against the Niners are never a good bet for any fantasy player this season but yeah. it is going to be a game that Kyle needs to needs to lead on Fitzgerald it's going to be those but it, two of their next four games is against them, so not not good, not fun. Not at all. Um, all right, moving on to our final game of the week, right? It's our final game of the week this time? Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, the Bucks at Titans. We touched on this already a bunch with other players, uh, talking about Corey Davis and A.J. Brown. Um, but Jonu Smith is honestly, other than you know Mike Evans doing Mike Evans blow-up things, Jonu Smith is one of my takeaways from this game. Uh, without Delaney Walker, six catches, 78 yards, a touchdown. He's caught, I think, about 146 yards over the last couple games with the touchdown. Um, looks like one of Tannehill's favorite targets uh, without Delaney Walker in there. And top tight end pickup for this week, for sure. You know what? i got to be more of a believer in, in guys like John O'Smith. And I, for some reason, I, I'm why if I'm a believer in Eric Ebron, why can't I be a believer in John O'Smith? Why? <laughs> I don't know why. It's just... Because of the past, I always feel like, okay, yeah, six catches, 78 yards on the touchdown. But, you know, and what the question is, is where was Corey Davis? Corey Davis gone again. Was here for one week. I thought, okay, looks like he's turning it around. And then, whew, boom, down it goes. I, I really don't understand it. And, and also... Um, the Titans defense was a good, good one to start because, uh, Winston was throwing interceptions and he still ended up with, you know, half decent stat. Like got two touchdowns, but uh, Jameis Winston, man, how do you start that guy? How do you start Jameis Winston? But he because did- he can, he can win you games as bad, like as much as he can lose them for you. There's nobody else that I would, that you can realistically find around the NFL that I would say, Hey, this guy's going to win me more games than Jameis Winston because Jameis will win them, but he'll also lose them. So yeah. used his legs, like <laughs> used his legs for once. He got fifty three yards. He never does yeah. that. Yeah. Never does that. Fifty three yards. Fifty three yards. Maybe maybe you should uh, maybe you should uh, do that a little more often. Stopped him from throwing picks. Whatever it takes. Yeah, that's true. Um, All right. Let's. Oh, we got we got a let's final go. in the. Uh, we've got a final here. Pittsburgh twenty seven, Miami fourteen. I was so ready for Miami to win this game. They went up fourteen nothing. I was so so ready for Miami to win this game. And now I have to look at uh, over here to see. I was sort of distracted earlier when we were doing uh, the the game score because I've got. And now I have to know that now that that's gone final. And it turns out, yes, 
I have beaten Kevin. Hey, Kev, I won by a point. <laughs> I win by a point. Ooh, I'm going to go look at this matchup now. I, I, win. <laughs> I beat Kevin by a point. Point nine points, actually. Yeah, Less than a nine. point, you beat him. Yeah, you see, you see, and I even gave him a chance by starting D.D. Westbrook, who uh, had to leave the game. Well, that's something that we didn't talk about, too, is D.D. Westbrook. Um, not sure what's going to be happening with him, but um, oh. he got hurt. It was that Mark Walton fumble with three minutes left in the game. Walton fumbled on a on an 11-yard reception, lost, him, lost Kevin the game. Oh well, well, there you go. You see, and I, I and I started uh, JD McKissick. I even gave him a chance by starting JD McKissick. You see, I could have started Jordan Howard, or even oh, wow, I could have started Deontay Johnson. Started that would have been classic. That would have been a classy start. Start DJ. I should have started Deontay Johnson anyway. This is against Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure what, what the uh, what your McKissick over over Johnson choice was, but hey, you have Deontay Johnson now, so that's all that matters. Yeah, you no, won, I, I, I I was just trying to be cute. That's why with the JD McKissick. Yeah. That's why I lose in fantasy because I always do these I do these crazy things, you know, like I, like I try to be a big shot, you know. Yes, but getting those big shot moves, it's it's <laughs> worth it. When when they work, it's worth it. I know. But and it's also it just it angers your opponents too when you when you win like that. <laughs> but I got a win on the board. Hopefully, oh well, stat corrections happen, but eh, not not that often. I don't know. Well, they could, but anyways, let's move on to our uh, yeah. segments, our weekly segments. Let's start with the panic button, Richard. Who you got? Panic button. Time to panic on DJ Moore of the Panthers. Uh, yeah, not too going too good for the uh, DJ Moore. If I said, "Hey, John, I want uh, I want to offer you DJ Moore," would you just would you kind of think? Eh, would you would you be saying, "Oh yeah," or would you say, "Yeah, well, who for?" <laughs> I mean, I think about it. I like DJ Moore as a player. Um, I mean, I think about it. I, I wouldn't pay okay. too much for him, but I'd, I'd consider it. Okay, half PPR. Uh, okay, um, he's had one touchdown all year. Um, now he's had uh, 44 yards. Uh, like he's gotten like the last three games, eight, ten, and nine targets. Uh, 91 yards, no touchdowns. 73 yards, one and the target. The targets are there. That's the that's what are, you want. That the targets, targets are, are there. The targets are there. But this is with this. Remember, this is with Kyler Murray. Remember, okay. But Kyle Allen. Kyle Allen. Pardon me, Kyle Allen. And uh, DJ Moore with Kyler Murray would be amazing. I'd love that pairing. Yeah, but Tennessee next, then at Green Bay. Oh, I'd take him. He He's super consistent in half PPR. Just looking at the points here, 9, 13, 12, 6, 12, 12. I, I'd take that for sure. And this last game against the Niners, he still had six six half PPR points. I'll take it. He's like the James White of receivers. No ceiling, all floor. I still think he's WR3 material. Yes, but again, no ceiling, all floor. That's what that's what you but want he in was a supposed, receiver free. But he was supposed to be high WR2. Oh, no, that, that was a reach. No, no, uh, no, no, not not in Carolina. Carolina receivers haven't done that since uh, since Steve Smith. That's true. Or that one year or of Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin I guess. Benjamin. <laughs> the yeah. one year of Kelvin Benjamin. Kelvin Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that one. Um, my panic button is Cortland Sutton. He hasn't done anything wrong to make me panic on him. But if Joe Flacco's hurt, the next QB up is Brandon Allen, uh, sixth round pick uh, out of Arkansas. He. Don't really know anything about him other than that. Uh, he doesn't really have a game log to go off of. Um, he, I, don't, I don't think he's made a start. I don't think he's played in the league. Uh, I don't think Cortland Sutton can. I don't know if he's good elite enough. I'm going to use elite in a Joe Flacco analysis here. Um, elite enough to overcome Brandon Allen as his QB. And if I was an owner, I'd be extremely worried about my uh, about my wide receiver. Uh, I will, but I'll play Devil's Advocate just like you did, uh, because w- with without Emmanuel Sanders, that's got to help him a little bit, you would think, would it not? I, it all depends on how Brandon Allen is. I've never seen the guy play. No. He, he, he could be Tom Brady for all I know. Well, he's not, but he could be another you know late round sleeper. He could be a good player, but I don't, if I'm relying on I, 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 but, but, with, no, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with a new QB, oh, that's risky. I would I'm say panicking. so high for sure, if you can. Yep. I would say so high, yeah, sure, 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 sure. I'm okay with that, definitely. Um, yep. Who's your second panic, Richard? My second panic, huh? Zach Ertz. 
what's going on? He's you're not getting the value you for what you drafted him at at all. You are not. You are not getting you're not getting the value for from Zachers. Uh this is half PPR for the last four games. He's had one touchdown all year. That was against the Jets. And he had five fantasy points. Uh five fantasy points, three fantasy points. Uh I really don't know when Zach Ertz, actually, you know, I'd feel much happier owning Dallas Goddard at the moment than I would Zach Ertz. You're not getting, I think he was drafted at ADP number two, tight end. You're not getting that value. You certainly are not. You are not. Nope. And, uh, and Dallas Goddard caught uh, another touchdown, so he's got uh, two in his last two games. And uh, yeah, that's Zach Ertz has been kind of brutal, actually. Yeah, very brutal. I think uh, if you can try to move on from uh, Zach Ertz, you do well. I'd I'd rather own Goddard. I mean, I'd rather stream Goddard. Own own and stream. Yeah, sort of interchangeable there. But yeah, he's my other guy, definitely. Yep. And my other my other panic is Le'Veon Bell. Um, in a game where Sam Darnold is struggling uh, against an okay defense, the Jags aren't what they were. They're still okay. Uh, Bell got nine carries uh, and five targets. He finished with a total of thirty five yards uh on 14 touches the offensive line is brutal um man the 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 jets offense looks bad if darnold can improve over the next cake schedule sure but there's not much in this offense i'm seeing hope for uh belt he's making the most of it with his patient running style but boy he looked uh he didn't look awful the jets look awful and it's awful for him it is it's bad and now um he's getting boxed in because Danner, darnold can't uh seem to break out of the ghost thing yeah he keeps seeing ghosts which i still don't get that what does it mean what does that mean john what does the ghost thing mean uh so he's seeing and feeling defenders around him that aren't there so the patriots kind of they scared him so that what even if there's no pressure on him he's feeling pressure and making rush decisions so he's seeing ghosts like they aren't really there Right. No. <laughs> but that is. But I, you know, but I really don't like the criticism about the about the guy because it made for really good controversy. And uh, even guys guys who've been playing for football for a long time, I think even Favre comment, commented on it. And it was so interesting because, yeah, you, there's these phantom defenders that are chasing you. And, and also not only that, um, actually, I think he was seeing ghosts downfield in the game against the Patriots because he was just th- throwing the ball to no one in particular, not even yeah. to Patriots. It was like, he's oh, gee, there's nobody there. Maybe the ghosts are downfield everywhere. But anyways, uh, Le'Veon, but to your point, Le'Veon Bell, yes. He's going to get boxed in. He's uh, against, um, he's got Miami coming up at in Miami, which is, not bad. He might he might get a bit of an uptick there. Then there's the Giants uh, at home. Well, they're always at home when they're playing the Giants, and uh, and then Washington, Oakland. Uh, so he might he might be able to might be able to turn it around. Um, I would buy low. I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't try to move him on, but I would try to buy low on him. Maybe it. Yeah, that's that's a fair assessment. I. Uh, running backs and bad bad offenses are tough, especially the ones that are supposed to be elite and you're gonna have to pay, you know, a RB one price for. It, it's a tough bet for me and one that I don't know if I would make. That's yeah. where I'm coming from. Yeah, but so I'm just playing a little bit of devil's advocate there for the sake of argument. Yeah, for sure. Uh, who's who's moving up? Moving on up, Allen Robinson. Uh, Bears doing great. He's making some great catches. Uh, you know, <laughs> Mr. Trubisky is so awful, but. Alan Robinson is making him look good. Uh, Alan Robinson, yes, he only had um, how many, he only had uh, nine fantasy points this game, but he's been putting up some pretty good numbers lately. He's he's had uh, three touchdowns in the last three games, uh, two against Oakland, but of course there's the bye week in there. But um, I'm I'm quite liking him. I think he's getting the the good targets. The, he's getting the good catches, and he's got Philadelphia, Detroit, and the Rams coming up. And the Giants and Detroit again. So he's got he's got a pretty good lineup of games coming up. So Allen Robinson, yeah, he's he's a guy. If you can uh, if you can make a trade for Allen Robinson, uh, he's he's got a good stretch coming up. He's got a good stretch of games. So uh, very worthwhile. And if uh, Trubisky um, gets his act together a little bit more, I mean, he looks he's kind of looking a little better. But um, not hard to look better after last week. <laughs> no, but uh, Alan Robinson. Uh, I, I really think Alan Robinson is a, is he's a good uh, wide receiver to own on your fantasy team. I don't know how you feel about it, but that's how I. Alan I'm okay with Alan Robinson. I don't like Trubisky, but he he likes Robinson, and as you said, Robinson's making Trubisky look better than he actually is. I'm mm-hmm. I'm okay with him for sure. Uh my moving on up. My first one is Derek Carr. 
not the uh, not the sexiest pick for a quarterback. Uh, I know he gets a lot of flack around here, but uh, he's coming off his best game of the season: 285 yards, three touchdowns uh, against the Texans. Uh, he's got both his weapons, Tyra Williams and Darren Waller. Uh, they're both good red zone options. They've both helped him out a lot, and he's got good matchups coming up. He's got the Lions, he's got the Chargers, he's got the Bengals. They're all in the top ten, um, allowing fantasy points to quarterbacks, mm-hmm. and. You know, if you have people on buy, if you are a Patrick Mahomes owner, I think Derek Carr uh, is a solid low, is a solid streamer for the next three weeks. Yeah. Um, again, I'll take a sake of art for the sake of argument. He has not had a 300 game yard game yet this season. Yep, yeah, he um, does get a lot of flack for that, but <laughs> <laughs> but he is, but he is, uh, he is good at uh, the touchdowns, and like you say, he does have a good lineup. So not too much argument for that. No, he, he's he's definitely a worthwhile streamer for the next uh, three games if he's. If you're not in a two quarterback league or flex, super flex. Yep. And uh, sticking with the Bears here, who is your second moving up? Yeah, I'm sticking with Bears. More Bears, Bears, ah, Bears. Yeah, the Bears. David Montgomery. We mentioned him already. Definitely moving on up. I I mentioned him as a uh, as a buy low candidate uh, around the London game. You should have done the buy low at the London game, people. I put it out there, so now it's turning. He's turning it around. Now he's going to start paying off for you. Bingo. Yep. And my second, uh, moving on up. Oh, I, just, I completely blanked on him. Uh, Darius Geis, the Redskins, uh, put on IR early with with the uh, the knee injury. The Redskins obviously want to run the ball a lot. Uh, they're giving old man Peterson a ton of carries. When Geis comes back, I think he's going to get featured, mm-hmm. and uh, he'll be back soon. If you have an IR spot on your team. Uh, if you have a bench spot that you want to that you, you want to hold, I think guys is a good option. Yeah, you know he's a guy I didn't even was wasn't thinking about, and, and uh, boy, Adrian Peterson, Jono, he's not really doing that great. So guys is if he yeah, can yeah, stay he, healthy, he looked good against time. the Vikings though. I think he had a small revenge game, a little bit, yards, fourteen carries, little revenge game for Pe- for Peterson. Uh, I know, but that, that's sort of an exception for the rule to the rule. Granted, it was a deluge against the 49ers. I get all that, and it's nobody had a good fantasy he gave him that but uh, I don't know I think that the, the tread is a bit worn and uh, it is and Callahan likes to run I think it's going to be Geist when he comes back but which is why he's moving it up for me yeah no no completely uh, no I can't even uh, I can't even argue that one that is he must stay healthy this time and there's one thing about guys who come off of, of IR and stuff they're kind of a little bit it's it's a mental thing about not wanting to get injured and uh, so well rather than the the idea is there's there's two things in in football there's protecting the ball and there's protecting your body and uh, I think there's kind of like a psychological thing where I don't want to get hurt but I gotta protect protect the ball or protect your body sometimes there's a choice there you gotta make in in a split second so. yeah. But eh, I'm sure he'll come back, and he's you know he's better. He's I, w- I don't want to say better for it, but I'm sure he he'll, he'll come back in a, a, good, a good place mentally. Hopefully, I hope so too. Uh, all right, final thoughts for the week. Looking ahead to week nine, Richard, who? Uh, what are your games of the week? Are your game of the week? Uh, my game of the week. Well, I guess it, guess it would be. I already mentioned. I'm gonna have to get up the list to see see what game. If my computer, my computer's just decided to freeze up here. Uh, all right, I can go first uh, right. while you look that up. Uh, game of the week for me, uh, I'm going Patriots Ravens. Um, I know, I know, I know, coming from a Pats fan, but I want to see how Lamar Jackson does against the Patriots defense. I'm very, very curious to see uh, what kind of schemes that Belichick comes up to stop the run uh, from Jackson, stop Mark Ingram, and the deep passes that obviously Jackson is uh, is, is is good at. Um, be very interesting to see. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's gonna be a closer game than a lot of people are gonna are thinking. Oh, you and Kevin. You know, yep. Kevin, it'll be something to talk about next week. The the uh, how about Minnesota at Kansas City? That's I like a, that one. Uh, that, that's a that's a good game. Where and uh, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, Mahomes should be back for that one. Isn't it amazing how quickly these quarterbacks can next come week? Back? I, I I don't see Mahomes coming back next week. That would be so? very irresponsible of the Chiefs to bring him back for next week. Oh, they got to get back in the race, man. They just lost to the Packers and uh, and uh, they were kind of lucky that uh, Oakland didn't win. So. I, I mean, anyway. they're still leading the division. They no, they they can't. They they can't because the the Raiders and Chargers they're not catching them. Like they can finish tied with those two, and as soon as Mahomes comes back, they'll be fine. 
you can't you can't risk your QB's long term health for for a couple games in in you know his second year in November. It's it's not worth it. You can't. All right, uh, with only a minute left in our tape, uh, I think that'll uh, wrap it up for this week uh, for the week nine outlook and week eight review for the fantasy edge uh for richard seville i'm jonathan chan uh thank you everybody for listening and uh we'll see you next week Ta-da.